What happens when we take compostable plant-based goods and carbonize them in a biochar reactor? Today we're testing a coffee cup with a sleeve, a fork, a spoon, a plate, and yes, an entire roll of paper towels. Let's see how these eco-friendly items hold up under the heat. So the first item we're going to do is the paper towels. And what I'm curious about is if we can get it to penetrate all the layers of the paper towel and carbonize completely. And then will it stay intact or will it kind of crumble uh, when we go to take it out? So I'm going to put that in first. Next up, I'm going to put this little rack in there so that the, the paper plate and, and the forks just stay still on it. Next up is the paper plate. Um, I'm kind of curious about this one. It's so thin, I think what's going to happen is it's probably going to just curl up. Um, we had uh, other items that did that in other videos that were this thin, but we'll see. Next is the fork, and it'll be interesting to see how the, the tines on the fork come out. Will they just kind of disintegrate and break off, or will they stay intact? And keep in mind, these are all plant-based, compostable, and eco-friendly. So we're not burning any plastic here. Next up is the spoon. And it's got a little bit more solid structure, so we'll see if it stays intact. And then lastly is a coffee cup with a sleeve on it. And we'll see if that sleeve uh, stays intact and what the couple end up doing. So we could compost these items. Uh, and if you do, you end up losing about 70% of the carbon. Uh, but running them through a biochar reactor, you actually retain about 70% of the carbon. So uh, you get twice as much carbon left in the object and you can use it in the soil as compost or as biochar. So let's get it fired up. It's the next day and we're gonna check out how these paper products did. So remember, we had a plate, fork, spoon, a roll of paper towels, and a coffee cup. So each one is you know, mostly cellulose, but we'll see if there are any differences in how they carbonized. Oh, wow. So the fork and knife are pretty much gone. They have completely turned to ash. What's cool about the plate is you can actually still see the markings on it. It's got a bronze color, which usually is an indication of other materials like iron. You got the coffee cup. It is about to just completely crumble. And this was the sleeve that went around it. The sleeve is actually in better shape than the cup itself. And then we're gonna pull this grate out and look at the uh, paper towel roll. So the paper towel, if you could look down in here, we did some other wood that we had to burn again because it wasn't done completely. I'm being very gentle with it. Oh, that's neat. Look at the pattern on it. It's still got the, the uh, perforations between the sheets. So the, the paper cup is completely falling apart. It's a little bit windy here. Um, it is just nothing. There's the bottom, that's pretty neat, that separate piece of paper. Here's the sleeve that went around the coffee cup. It's just completely baked through. And what's interesting, it's hard to see on these smaller items, but these are very porous materials now. That's why uh, they're great, biochar is great to use in the garden, is it'll soak up nutrients and, and soak up water and hold on to it. So then when you use it in your garden, it'll slowly release the nutrients and water. All right, the plate, the plate is still pretty stout, but look at the fork and the knife. I mean, they're completely gone. It, it does look like it melted, which this is supposed to be, you know, a plant-based material. So it wasn't toxic to burn, but it's like completely gone. You can't even recognize it. I wasn't sure what to think on this. I thought it would hold its form somewhat, but it melted completely. And then the plate did what we expected. It just kind of wrinkled up. So right here on the plate, you can still see the lettering. That's always cool to me. Like when we did the t-shirt, you could also see the lettering on the t-shirt still, even though it was all burned away. 
just made of a slightly different material, so its color stayed somewhat. Oh, look at the inside of the cup here. It's kind of a silvery color. That's usually due to some kind of mineral in, in the material. All right, let's check out the paper towels. So this is what was going to be really interesting to me. It definitely shrunk a lot. The cardboard still feels somewhat firm, but it is breaking. Let's see if I can get a sheet off. I doubt I can without it breaking. This is where it was. The, the first sheet was glued. And it's just shredding here. Let's see. No, I'm not going to be able to get a sheet off. Let's see if I can take this paper towel. Are you strong enough to rip paper towels in half? Let's see. Completely carbonized all the way through. There is nothing left. This is mostly carbon. I'd say at least 60 to 70 percent because of the cellulose and the amount of carbon that's in cellulose. So look, it just tears easily. And then what we'll do with this, we'll use it in our garden um, as biochar. So this won't actually, this won't go to waste. Okay, closer look at the paper towels. You can see all the different layers. And this is a little bit of the cardboard sleeve that was in the, uh, or the cardboard roll that was in the middle. So, pretty neat what it did. But see, it's, you notice one thing, it's not all white. It's not ash. And that is the key here when, when using a retort is you don't want oxygen in. If oxygen got in, this would burn and just turn to ash. But since this is heated in an environment uh, with low oxygen, it just carbonizes instead of burns off. You just end up baking all the other materials but the carbon off. So that's what happens when you carbonize everyday items like paper products. Let me know what you want to do next in the comments below. Just make a suggestion and use the hashtag carbonize this and I'll see if we can do it. See you next time.